Department of Energy Press. All right, we're broadcasting, people. We're live. We're live and on air. We have no no viewers currently. That's yeah, okay. Um. All right. So for you, the, those of us in the room, let's get a great look. And we'll see how good this turns out. <laughs> we should delete this broadcast later. All right. We'll edit it. Oh, thank you. Okay. We can do that. So, inside of my sandbox course, that's like a great book. So this is, I hope you already know what a great book is. You know how to find it in your course term. If not, it's a different training you should be at. <laughs> you do. You do, Jessica. You got this. Okay. <clears throat> when you first come into this, the first thing normally you see if you've never set it up is you see the setup wizard. You see an option to start the setup wizard. This is using the default start page. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to this here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through the setup wizard because it's important and it's worth doing at least once. So this also gets an idea, shows you what's available for settings. Um, this particular one is set up for weighted. A lot of people use points. Normally it's one of these two. Formula is hardly ever used. Um, normally formula is only used if you have a really, really strange case or if you just like the way the old system worked. And then, uh, I don't know why you would like that. But this allows you to put in formulas for everything, but also requires you to put in formulas for everything mm -hmm. instead of doing like a weighted thing. Usually, a weighted will do what the formula, what you want to do with formula. Okay. But there are some some reasons to which you don't want to use formula. So I'm going to stick with weighted on my So I continue. Um, this is basically just what's released to the students. So the difference is they calculated and adjusted. The calculate is done automatically, so that's what the system is calculating for you. If you like to adjust your grade at the end of the term or whatever, then you may want to um, put adjust. So this is what the students see as their final grade. Mm -hmm. So if you want to tweak their grade, if they brought chocolate, whatever, you can allow this one. Otherwise, calculate your final grade. So when it's saying it cannot be adjusted without editing grade item scores, that's individual items. It's not the calculated grade. You can't that, edit the calculated. Right. Correct. You cannot edit calculated grade, but you can edit. If you wanted to adjust this, you could adjust a grade inside. One of the more things being calculated, but you couldn't just adjust the final grade. So this is probably not a bad option. Most people like the idea of being able to bump up a student, you know, half point or whatever, just to, mm -hmm. if they need to for whatever reason. So we'll go with that one. I'll say continue. Um, this other item. So I can either drop ungraded items or treat ungraded items as zero. So this depends on the mindset. Um, notice on this bottom one is automatically final grade updated. You may want to drop ungraded items. But if I drop ungraded items, um, unless I grade as I go, if I do not put zeros as I'm grading, someone doesn't turn an assignment if I don't grade them. Mm -hmm. Their grades are not going to be accurate, especially because I'm basically I'm going to keep this final grade updated. Mm -hmm. So I like this option, but if you do this as you grade, you can't just ignore those who did not submit. You have to keep you have to zero out. Zero. Okay. Otherwise, it'll be inaccurate for that student. That works for bonus items, but not necessarily like a real item. That's yeah, that works for everything. But I'm saying like when you'd want to use something like that. So you have like a lot of bonus items in your course. Yeah. Well, the bonus item is not as big to put a zero because it's not okay. actually out of anything. That's just it doesn't have an out of score. Okay. It's just on top of score. Okay. So does that make sense? Yes. All right. I want to keep going here. Um, I'm not going to mess a lot with scheme right now. There are some options for scheme. The biggest reason you'd want to a grade scheme would be the, the default scheme is the, the percentage. Um, percentage shows yeah. but you can also do like a letter grade scheme that's kind of the only other reason I see that people really want to change a scheme um, and you may want to make a scheme for letter grade mm -hmm. and that's not a bad option but so that's the best possibility so I'm going to say continue some of these are just basics like okay two decimal point that makes sense um, and this is also, so student view display options is what they're seeing, points, weighted, grade scheme, symbol, if you want them to get a color, they can. You get a color code, you can actually, like, red, or, you know, you just follow them. There's right. different colors, and yeah, I think you can modify that inside as well, and there you can do that. Yeah. I like the colors well because of the fact that it's easy to 
good for you. It's good for you. Yeah, this is the student's view, so you may not want that from the student view. You can modify your view also. Mm -hmm. Different set, separate view. Um, so we're making sure everything's good. Decimals is two. Characters displayed. And in a text term is 15. And display final grade calculation for users. This is an option. And if these little question marks are always your friend. If you really don't know what's going on with these, um, this tells you a bit more about them. Some of these are really uh, good and some of them don't have a lot of information, but they're worth clicking on. Um, so let's say continue. All right. And this is just kind of walking through everything, saying, is this what you wanted? Yep, it is. So I'm going to say finish. So now I've done this setup wizard. I could go individually and look at some different things. This also takes me to look at different pieces of the kind of like what's on top, but I can modify some different things from here as well. Um, I could import grades if I wanted to. That's tricky. <coughs> Excuse me, that's trickier than it sounds. You don't want to import grades unless you export from your gradebook, otherwise it's just a pain. It doesn't work very well. Um, I recommend not doing that. Um, so let's just click on manage grades for a minute. We'll go to enter grades and in a few minutes, but again, I'm not going to get real deep in the in the scheme. But you can go to schemes and modify. You can make a new scheme and do. Um, I'll go just click new scheme. For the more actions, I'll just copy delete. If I say new scheme, this is where if I wanted to, I could actually assign values and colors and different things. Like maybe the symbol is going to be A B C D. Yeah, so I'm not going to get real deep into that, but so let's go to manage grades. Right, I've set mine up a little bit. I've played with it in this course. This is just a play course. Um, and in here, I actually have two different categories, and then these others are items. Sometimes people get nothing confused. So people often just make a category and try to associate a grade to this. Like a snake in the building. So we, um, that's, that's kind of an important thing to look at. So the, the, the difference is a category... Your, your items have to be, if, if you want to use categories, you don't have to. The only, the only point of the category is to, uh, in my opinion, in weighted, it's, they make a lot of sense. In a weighted gradebook type, categories make a lot of sense because then you could say, all of my assignments are worth this amount. Mm -hmm. Overall, my assignments are worth 40% of my grade, or the weight of 40. Mm -hmm. So to me, that makes sense. Um, you can make the weight really as a percentage, if you can be up to 100. So. So I have 40 and 40, which means mine, are, this is not actually even a correct grade book option. It's, it's not even going to be right, because I only have way to 40 here, way to 40 here, and I don't have any other options. Actually, no, I have that right, because these are not in the category. That's why it's not given here. So my midterm and final are both worth 10, so I have 80, so I actually have 100. If I did not, if I was to come in here and modify this, I kind of like this. Um, so I'll click on that to edit it. I kind of like this option. Um, not out of an option, but this little. If it's wrong, this is tell. This is going to tell me I'm not adding up to 100 percent. You need to modify your weight. So that's good. That's kind of helping you keep you on target. Um, sometimes this can throw people because it looks like it's underneath this category, but it's not. It automatically distributes it. Yep. No, I'll talk about it. You can talk about it. It's okay. Is it possible for teachers to have over 100% and still leave it? Not really easily. You can modify so you can you can give them more. You can allow some more things. But normally this, you're going to want it to add up to 100%. Let me modify this back to 40. So the different ways this category works. If I'm giving this a weight of 40 for my... Um, or my an assignment. So all my assignments are worth 40%, really, a weight of 40. I can also allow the category grade to exceed the category weight, which I don't know if that's necessary, but it may be at that times. Um, and then there's different ways of distributing the weight. So I can either manually assign the weight. If I'm going to manually assign the weight, I probably just want to put them in a category. Because it gets a little complicated here. But you could. You might just want to say all your assignments are worth 40% total, but this one assignment is worth a little more. So you could say that assignment. The trick is, inside the category, it needs to add up to 100% for the category. Mm -hmm. And that can throw people sometimes. So if you want your, you, you have a, a written paper, and overall you want to be worth 10% of your grade, if I put it in a category that's worth 
I have to think about the math to make sure I get my weighting right. Does that make sense? So it may sometimes be better just to take that particular item outside of the category and give it its own weight. That just depends. Um, I can also distribute the weight points across items, you know, regular, and I can also do it based on their um, by points, uh, yeah, based on the points that you've given them. So if one assignment is worth more points, it'll it'll base it on the points they're worth instead of just evenly. Mm -hmm. I can do it evenly based on the points. If I do it evenly, which is what I did in the other one, it'll just automatically do it. And when I do it evenly, I can also drop some if I want to. The other option, I don't have the option of dropping the lowest or dropping the highest. I don't know why you drop the highest, but maybe you don't like your students, I guess. I don't know. But you can drop as many as you want. So this this is really nice. I like this. And then the old OCT system back in the day, that was really hard to do. You had to go in and use all kinds of crazy stuff to do it. So. And so the student view, some of these other options are pretty good for defaults, but you may want to modify these. Um, you can display different things with the students. So I'll go ahead and save and close that category. So I only have one thing in there, so it doesn't really matter how I distribute it. But if I want to add more assignments, as I add more assignments, I don't have to worry about that. I can have one or a thousand assignments, and they're still only worth 40% of my grade mm -hmm. overall. It'll automatically take care of that. Um, what else can I talk about right here? Does that make sense? Am I missing anything right here? Okay. So that should kind of handle that. That's the idea behind this. If I want to, I can actually make new items from here, or I can make them from inside of, say, Dropbox or quizzes and as I, as I go about creating my assignments. Um, if I want to go ahead and make my, my gradebook first, I can go ahead and create all my items and then just associate that Dropbox to that item. Mm -hmm. So I can make it earlier if I want to. Um, but again, the item is different. The item is where the actual grade goes. The category is just holding that um, overall type. And if I the other piece under more actions, there's a few things here. If I've actually come in and deleted something on accident, they fixed some stuff. So I can delete. If I click on delete here, it's going to take me to this other screen where I can delete. All of mine are associated. This little eye right here is telling me this is associated. This is information telling me where it's associated to. So these are associated to some type of an assignment, a special test, uh, and I cannot delete them because they're associated. If I want to delete, I have to unassociate them or delete that particular item first. Mm -hmm. um, I could delete just the category. Categories aren't associated with anything, but if I delete the category, then all of a sudden these are not associated inside of it. They're not in a category anymore, so. Um, but I cannot delete these others. But I also may want to restore one. So under more actions, if I click event log, Maybe I've deleted something. Um, it shows down here like some stuff was deleted. I don't have any that I've deleted and, and not restored yet. But if I've deleted one and not restored, I'll get an option to restore it right here. I can just click restore and it'll bring it back. So if I've deleted a column on accident, I can restore it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of nice as well. Um, let's bounce over to integrates for a minute and walk through this a little bit and we'll go to settings. So I only have a few students in this class. Yeah, this is my class. Not doing very well, Miata. Yeah. You might need to step it up. Should uh, do better than really, dude. <laughs> That's true. Well, you know, Casper. So there's some other options inside of here as well. I'm underneath um, what they call a spreadsheet view, so I can come in here and add points directly to the. It's like I would in a spreadsheet. So I could easily just grade here, or if I wanted to grade these manually. Under this discussion, I'm going to switch this first to standard view for a minute. So I'm going to go back to the normal view. If I have a discussion post, I don't have any, it looks like, in here. Let's see if I have any over here at all. Nope. I don't have anybody that's posted a discussion. If I do, I actually have a little discussion icon next to that. Next to that, I can click on and grade them from right here. It makes life a whole lot easier. I can also click the drop down and click grade all. And then under this submission, I have a little button that I can click on. It looks like the discussion I'm on, and I can grade from here. Um, I'm going to just give them the grade. And that feedback goes in the gradebook, or does that associate back to the discussion board? It goes, this would be in the gradebook. Okay. They may actually see in the discussion board, too, but it would be in the gradebook. Okay. Um, and here's the, the different scheme, weighted grade. So that's how I can create that one. I'm going to cancel here. <coughs> 
oh, this is my drop down because I've actually dropped the lowest in, under discussion. So that's what this is showing is this has been dropped. So as I'm going along, maybe that would change because it's just going to drop the lowest. So if I add more discussions or whatever, and they have another lower grade after they're done, they'll drop the lowest. And that's what that's showing. This is a dropped grade. Um, that's kind of a nice idea. Under midterm, this little piece right here, I've turned on plagiarism detection. Um, and this is her her paper. It's a PDF paper. I don't think it's submitted, but I could mm -hmm. submit this. I think her PDF may not submit because this is actually one I just playing with. It's probably not. It's not hardly readable. This is a fake paper. Well, Turnitin can pretty much do anything yeah, now. Yeah, Turnitin can. Yeah, Turnitin can do PDFs. And images. Yeah. And PowerPoints. I don't know. I don't know the images. I haven't heard that part yet. Mm -hmm. That's sure interesting. Can. Yeah, I know it can do a lot of stuff now. You can actually do stuff with people drive with them. They're working on that. Plagiarism week is April twenty first to the twenty fifth. <laughs> By the way, we turned it in. But if it doesn't, um, this is actually telling me this little icon here is telling me this one cannot be generated because not enough words. Oh no! Actually, it may be words. password protected. That's probably why. And it needs a minimum of twenty words before it'll actually before it'll. run a report. Yep. So it'll tell you if there's some reason, or I could submit it. Maybe it, maybe this was added afterwards, so that if a student added, I mean, if a uh, student added an assignment, then I change my mind, decide to turn on pages, and I can do that here. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll go back to folder submissions. Okay. So I'm, all of a sudden I'm inside of the paper because it's right to that. So I'm going to go back to my gradebook. All right. The other piece that we want to look at is settings. If I click on settings, there's a few things here worth looking at. So this is some display options for me. So personal display options, or unit display options, and calculation options. So here, these are how I want to see it. If I want to see the username, that's fine. Again, this question mark is your friend. Um, most of these are probably fine by default. I'm not going to modify these, but just they're important to know they're here. I can also modify which page is my default start page. Um, I think the initial one is actually the setup wizard, but you can change that. Under the org unit display options, the org unit is really just a bad name for your section. Um, again, Pretty much the same thing, just a different area. And the calculation option. This one's one that's kind of important. You can modify this. This is also in the wizard, but I can modify it here. I can come in and change if I don't want to wait it. I can modify that. Always keep the final grades updated. That's by default not turned on, I believe. So you may want to check that if you want that to always be updated. And then save that. <coughs> think that's most of the gradebook. Um, this help out, you know, also is your friend and give you a lot more information about the gradebook. So at least some worth checking and checking out. There's a lot of information in here that they kind of hide and put little, little icons here showing you what they can do with it. Um, but as far as the gradebook, and that's what I'm going to cover today. If you are watching this later and you have questions about it, you know where we live and um, how to get a hold of us over in the faculty development site. So thanks for watching. I'm going to stop this broadcast and hopefully we'll see you soon.